Today, I'm going to turn this decade-old Dell Optiplex into an all-in-one home media server. Will it be fun? Definitely. But is it a good idea? Before we get started, I want to take just a quick minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordPass. NordPass is a super easy to use password manager that works across all your devices and sets the bar for security with their advanced encryption and zero knowledge architecture. But even with a lot of these security features, I know many of you might be tempted to avoid the benefits of a password manager because, well, I guess it does seem a bit scary to save all your passwords in one place. The zero knowledge architecture makes it nearly impossible for your passwords to be leaked due to a data breach, but I want to show you a really quick and easy tip to make your passwords even more secure. All you do is let NordPass handle all the generating, saving, and autofilling of your passwords, but when you first create a password for an account, add a small phrase or sequence of numbers to the end of the password, and use this exact same key phrase for all of your passwords. This way, NordPass does all of the heavy lifting, but is blind to that key phrase that you put at the end, meaning even if someone managed to get access to your entire vault in plain text, the passwords still wouldn't work because they don't have that secret little add-on. Using this little trick alongside NordPass, you can enjoy the peace of mind that comes with knowing your passwords are safe and secure. And right now, you can get a special deal on two years of NordPass, plus one month for free by going to nordpass.com slash hardwarehaven, or by using the code hardwarehaven at checkout. You can also get a three month free trial for a business account by using code hardwarehavenbusiness. Step up your online security and get signed up with NordPass today. In a previous video, I took a look at this Dell Optiplex 790 and came to the conclusion that for an older PC, it's pretty solid for desktop use and even some light gaming. But because of the higher power draw of the second Gen i5, it wouldn't really be a good fit as a home server. So today, I'm going to turn this thing into a home server. Okay, yeah, that doesn't make sense, but I, for some reason, really liked the form factor of this machine, especially when it's laying flat. It just seems like something that could easily fit somewhere accessible, but a bit inconspicuous. And it also has a full-size optical drive. And I just so happened to be getting a bit more interested in ripping ultra high definition Blu-rays. And that led me to start thinking of how cool a system like this could potentially be if you set it up to be able to rip Blu-rays, transcode and store them, and then stream them to your devices, all from this one box. Obviously with this specific machine, the power draw was going to be a big issue, but for other even more efficient PCs like it, there's another glaring issue, and that's that this case only has room for one three and a half inch hard drive. And while my movie and show collection isn't incredibly valuable since I have the hard copies as backups, I don't wanna to have to rip them all again if a single drive fails. So after a bit of Googling, I stumbled across this three and a half inch to dual two and a half inch adapter from Corsair for only like seven bucks. And that's when I decided to get a bit goofy and go hardware haven style on this project. I came up with a plan to use Unraid, which I think is great for home server stuff like this. It has great community apps for Jellyfin, which is what we'll use to stream our media, as well as apps for Make MKV and Handbrake that will be used for ripping and encoding Blu-rays. Unraid also conveniently boots from a USB drive, meaning I could install these two two terabyte, two and a half inch hard drives for storage. Now I was planning to just use a couple of random two and a half inch drives I've accumulated, but I actually have some plans in the future for these. The i5-2400 clearly isn't a good candidate for video transcoding, as I previously learned in the last video. So I decided to just keep the NVIDIA Quadro K1200 in the system, as it has the ability to run a single NVENC stream and supports H.264 up to 4K. The system had extra PCIe lanes available, so I was tempted to drop in a dual NVMe adapter to allow for a cache pool, but I wasn't planning to copy too many files to the server, so it probably wasn't worth it. The Optiplex already had a DVD drive, which would be totally fine for, well, DVDs, but I wanted to be able to rip not only Blu-rays, but Ultra HD Blu-rays, which are a bit trickier. Fortunately, there is an awesome guide over on the Make MKV forums that made things fairly simple. I picked up this LG WH16 NS40, which was listed on the guide as a drive that could be reflashed to work with LibreDrive. Reflashing? LibreDrive? Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with any of this. It's not too complicated. 
Due to some of the DRM complications of Blu-ray, especially 4K or Ultra HD Blu-rays, you can't typically just read the raw data straight off the disc, but that's where LibreDrive comes in. I'm not going to explain how it works here because there's a great forum post that I'll link in the description below, along with a guide that I mentioned previously. To make LibreDrive compatible with a lot of drives, the firmware needs to be flashed to a specific version. Fortunately, this process is pretty simple and safe at this point, but I'll talk about that later. Now, I want to be clear that I'm not an expert when it comes to any of this stuff. I do have my own media collection at home that I've been using for a couple of years, but I've actually only used DVDs up to this point, so this is all a little bit new. So don't treat this video as an end-all be-all tutorial necessarily, but more so as inspiration and maybe entertainment. There are a lot of other great videos out there that you should definitely check out, including this one here from Jeff Geerling. The system was already cleaned up and mostly all put together from the last video, so all I really needed to do was swap out the optical drive and then set up the hard drive caddy. Getting the 2.5 inch drives in was easy, but I had to do a little bit of messing around to get the cables to all fit because of how close the drives were together. Eventually I got it all to fit though, and it was time to install Unraid. Unraid does have a flashing tool, but I've run into issues with it in the past, so I just decided to use the manual method, which is still really easy. First, the drive needs to be formatted in FAT32, and I only had a 64 gigabyte drive handy, but I just made a smaller partition and then formatted it as FAT32 and labeled it Unraid, which is important. After downloading the installer folder from the Unraid website, I copied everything over and ran the make bootable script. With that done, I popped the drive into the Optiplex, booted it up, and then navigated the IP address it gave to start setting up Unraid. After adding one of the hard drives to the array and then assigning the other as parity, I installed the Community Applications plugin to get access to the plugins and apps that I would be adding. If it seems like I'm going through all of this really fast and you want to know more about Unraid, maybe just check out this video I did here. Most of the initial setup is the same in both videos. Once I had access to the community apps, I installed the NVIDIA Drivers plugin, which is needed to use NVENC for transcoding. Before installing Jellyfin, I needed a file share to store all my media, so I created a public share called Media, and then accessed that share to create separate folders for movies and shows. I copied some stuff over to these, just to be able to test Jellyfin. After that, I found the Jellyfin app from linuxserver.io and started installing it. Here, I needed to mount some of the media folders that I created, and then also add the dash runtime equals NVIDIA argument under extra parameters to give Jellyfin access to the NVIDIA GPU. Once it was installed, I was able to head over to port 8096 to set up and test Jellyfin. After making sure everything was working fine, including hardware transcoding, it was time to move on to ripping some Blu-rays. To do this, I installed the Make MKV app, and here I also mounted volumes to give access to a new folder in the media share. And I also needed to provide device IDs for the optical drive. Fortunately, you can just spin up Make MKV without those IDs and check the logs, which will basically tell you what you missed. So I copied these two IDs here, clicked edit on the Make MKV container, and then added two new device configurations using the IDs I copied. Then I hit apply to restart the container. Once it finished spinning up, I went to port 7806 to get to the Make MKV UI, where I saw the optical drive showing up as expected. To test it, I popped in a standard Blu-ray and it read the disc just fine. So after reading the files, I found the eight files that correlated with the eight episodes on that disc and started saving them to my shared folder. I really only saved one for the sake of time, but it's fine. Once that was done, I copied the .mkv file over to my TV shows folder, labeled it properly, and then rescanned my Jellyfin library. And what do you know, it worked great. Because the file was using the H.264 codec, the Quadro K1200 could handle the transcoding just fine. Next though, I popped in a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, and as expected, Make MKV couldn't read the disc. This is because, like I mentioned earlier, this drive needs to be flashed with a different firmware to work with LibreDrive. While I probably could have found a way to do it running Unraid, I decided to just chuck my Windows SSD back into the system and do it there. 
All I had to do was download the flashing tool from the guide I mentioned, and then download the correct firmware binary from my drive. Once I had those, I could just use the software to flash the new firmware. I loaded up Make MKV in Windows just to make sure it was all good, and as you can see, it's now compatible with LibreDrive. Now in the Make MKV Web UI, I could open the disk, select the file for Knives Out, and start ripping. This does take a while, but after about an hour, I was able to drag the MKV into my movies folder and watch it on my desktop. However, this file uses the HEVC or H.265 codec, which is not supported by the Quadro K1200. This meant that we had to rely on software transcoding, which led to some unfortunate buffering, as the i5-2400 was doing everything it could to try to keep up. Also, the file size is pretty large, and while I want my movies to look good, maybe I don't want them to take up that much space. So this is where Handbrake comes in. Handbrake can be used to re-encode videos to different codecs, compression settings, and all sorts of other things. Installing it was about the same as Make MKV, but there aren't any devices to set up or anything, just a volume to map. There was one tweak I decided to make, which was to set up CPU pinning. I pinned the container to cores 1 through 3, which would hopefully leave core 0 available for other processes on the server. Handbrake is pretty CPU intensive, and my goal was to not bog down Make MKV or Jellyfin while Handbrake was running. With it set up, I imported the Knives Out MKV, and then set up a preset to keep the existing frame rate and resolution, but using the H.264 codec with a CRF of 20. This should hopefully preserve some of the quality, but make the file significantly smaller. With all of my settings tweaked, I started the encoding process, which gave me an ETA of only 16 and a half hours. Yeah, Handbrake is very CPU heavy. So while I could have left this running for the next day or so, I really needed to get this video done, so I decided to cheat and just use my Minis Forum UM690 to do the heavy lifting. The 16 thread Ryzen 9 6800HX knocked it out in a couple of hours, and I copied the finished file over to the server. This new file was significantly smaller, but more importantly, was able to be transcoded with the K1200, meaning no more stuttery mess. So while it's nice to be able to transcode the MKV files directly, it's also handy to have Handbrake to transcode them to a different codec and or file size when needed. You can actually set up a watch folder and Handbrake will automatically encode any files that land in there with a given preset, which could help speed up your workflow if you decide to re-encode a lot of your files. Obviously, this system isn't the best with the one-two punch of high power draw and simultaneous lack of CPU horsepower, but I did find it a lot of fun to set this project up, and I feel like I learned a lot in the process. Moving forward, I think I'm going to move my new Blu-ray drive into my main NAS and set up a Make MKV there, and I'll probably just let the UM690 run Handbrake and handle all the encoding. Hopefully you enjoyed this and maybe even learned from it. If you do something similar to this, let me know about your setup in the comments, or if you think there are ways I could have done this better, let me know that as well. Also, don't forget to head down to the description where you can get an exclusive deal on NordPass plus one month for free by using code HardwareHaven, or you can get three months for free on a business account with code HardwareHavenBusiness. That's about all for this one, so as always, thank you so much for watching, stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.